welcome to the latest episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin. This week we'll be discussing the 2002 comedy classic adaptation starring Nicolas Cage, Meryl Streep. The list goes on and on. It's an all-star cast. For those of you joining us for the first time, the B-Movie Club, it's like a book club, where each week we'll talk about different movies, cult classics, forgotten favorites, and uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> you can reach me on uh, Facebook through our page, Original B-Movie Club, also on YouTube, uh, KD9575, and of course on Twitter at KD9575. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube, uh, and just follow me on Twitter, I guess. And tell a friend, please, spread the word, homie. Adaptation. This movie is about Charlie Car Kaufman, he is a Hollywood screenwriter, and he's recently been uh, contracted to write a screenplay for a book called The Orchid Thief. And he's having a lot of trouble with it. Basically, the entire movie is his struggles adapting this book, which is kind of a true story. It's a New Yorker, it was based upon a New Yorker, New Yorker uh, article about a man in Florida who had stolen these protected orchids off of uh, state land, essentially state swamp. Um, and she, Susan Orlean, who wrote the book, uh, she adapted her own article into this flowing uh, artistic uh, novel. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it really has a very loose narrative, and the characters I mean, there's, it's, they're in the book, obviously, but it's not, it's less about the characters, there's not enough to fill a whole movie about them. So he's having trouble. Charlie Kaufman's having trouble adapting this book. To make matters worse, he's very insecure, and he has his own personal issues. He's got un unrequited love with another lady in the movie. Uh, their relationship, he's having trouble with. Just his own kind of fears about life, about his abilities. Um, and he's got a twin brother named Donald, who looks exactly like him, dresses exactly like him, wears his hair exactly like him. They are basically twins in every way except their personalities. Donald is dumb, but very friendly, outgoing, likable. Everybody likes him, which is the opposite of Charlie, who's neurotic and kind of awkward and peculiar. So there you go. <laughs> uh, Donald wants to break into the screenwriting game as well. So he starts doing all the things that Charlie tells him not to do, like he, he attends a screenwriting class. Um, all of his ideas are very cliched, and things you've seen a thousand times in a thousand different movies. Um, and he's just kind of a, a, a bother to poor Charlie, to say the least. Um, and so basically, the movie cuts back and forth between Charlie's struggle to write the screenplay and then these kind of snippets of Susan Orlean um, and her adventure in, in Florida writing her article and the things that she's dealing with. Um, what's interesting is this movie is very, very, very loosely based on true events. Um, Susan Orlean really did write an article for The New Yorker about this orchid thief, um, which she was contracted to change it to a novel, and then she sold the rights to the novel to make it into a movie. Um, Charlie Kaufman, who had had critical success with the movie Being John Malkovich, one of my favorites, was contracted to write this because they thought it'd be kind of funny. He could put his own flavor on it. Um, but because he had always done in the past, <clears throat> he hadn't really um, adapted works before. All of his um, screenwriting had been original things that he'd come up with. And it was always kind of off the wall and kind of strange. Uh, but funny, in my opinion. Um, so he has, in reality, he had a lot of trouble doing this. Um, so what he started to do is inject himself, you know, make him kind of a central character in it, his struggles adapting this work, because he had major league writing, writer's block trying to write the screenplay. Um, he started exaggerating events, he created a love interest, which didn't exist, he's actually been married for many years. Um, he uh, invented a twin brother um, for comic relief, and that's some of my favorite parts of this movie are the interaction between Nicolas Cage playing Charlie, 
and Nicolas Cage playing Donald. Um, in fact, I mean, it was so realistic, is that if you look at the credits, the screenwriting credits are listed Charlie Kaufman and Donald Kaufman. And when this was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Screenwriting, it's the first time in history that a fictional character was nominated for an award. So there you go. Um, Meryl Streep plays Susan Orlean. Um, and the real um, writer, Susan, or Susan Orlean, was a little concerned because there's a lot of off-the-wall stuff that happens with her character. I don't want to spoil everything. Uh, but it's like, initially she's just like, uh, you know, a reporter kind of um, coming down there to interview this orchid thief, John LaRoche, played by, by uh, Chris Cooper, who actually went on to win Best Supporting Actor Academy Award for his portrayal in this movie. Um, <laughs> about three quarters of the way through, the movie kind of takes a drastic shift and it's about the time uh, Charlie just says, you know what, I can't do this, and invites his crazy brother to help him write the script. It suddenly becomes like this thriller um, where we discover that uh, John LaRoche and Susan Orlean, in addition to having an online, <laughs> an online uh, porno website, they also uh, were after the orchids in the swamp because there was a, a, a drug property that they could get from the, from the orchids and wanted to become drug dealers, and Susan Orlean and John LaRoche try, attempt to uh, murder Charlie and Donald. It, it kind of goes off the rails a little bit. It's a totally different movie that, at that point, and frankly, a little disappointing. I mean, it gets very serious and very dramatic, and there's, you know, they're chasing them in the swamp. Um, whereas up to this point, it's been kind of wacky, oddball, goofy, which is what I like. You know what I'm saying? Um, the book was written and actually sold into uh, movie rights back in 94. It wasn't until the 2000s that he started adapting this into a movie. Um, Tom Hanks at one point was asked, or had entertained being in this movie, he eventually passed. Nicolas Cage, who up to this point, anybody who follows Nicolas Cage, uh, the last 10 years has been doing increasingly uh, stranger and stranger roles for whatever reason. He took this. Um, the character Charlie's kind of balding and he's kind of fat. Uh, Nicolas Cage actually wore a fat suit over the course of this movie. Um, not so you'd notice, <laughs> sadly, but true. Uh, what else can I tell you about this movie? They actually got the, uh, the whole crew together back from being John Malkovich. Uh, Spike Jones uh, came back to direct this. He was a director who'd done music videos back in the 90s. Now he's doing a lot of movie work. Uh, <laughs> but so it's it all kind of came together uh, at that moment and like I said it achieved great critical success um, people who watch this movie like being John Malkovich find that they either find it hilarious like me or they find it so bizarre as to be off-putting something to think about if you're planning on sitting down to watch it Chris Cooper actually read the script and he was not so sure he wanted to do it in fact his wife had to talk him into it uh, Meryl Streep, this is kind of a different role for her because at times she's very serious and she gets to be dramatic and she also gets to be kind of goofy in a few scenes in this. Nicolas Cage is Nicolas Cage. Um, when he's at his best, I think he is hilarious. At one point, Nicolas Cage said that he basically had to ignore all of his acting instincts and just follow the direction. Um, and this is what you get when uh, Nicolas Cage does that, for better or for worse. Um, it wasn't a huge success uh, financially, although obviously I said it won all sorts of awards, was nominated for all sorts of things. Um, but it does have a cult following, as you might imagine, and it also has a 91% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. You can't beat that. It is streaming instantly on Netflix, so rush out and see it, please. I highly recommend it. Um, next week, you know, having seen a little bit of the Nicolas Cage, I've got taste for more. I'm going to do the action thriller. I don't, I mean, I, it's hard for me to get my mind around it. There's so much going on. Face Off with Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. It is also streaming instantly on Netflix, so check it out. Send in your questions and comments. Obviously, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. Hit me up. Tell your friends. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote. And here it is.
So I'm thinking of putting in a chase scene. It's like the killer flees with the girl on horseback and the cop is chasing them on a motorcycle. It's like motorcycle versus horse. It's like technology versus horse. And there it is. Thank you for joining us next week. Face off. Send in your questions and comments. And be well.